Hello everybody and welcome to the second educational video part two of the basics we're gonna be talking about how you have to mark out your horizontal levels how to map them and also identifying like SNR flips and what is the correct way to do it so let's begin you must master the horizontal levels before proceeding to more advanced tools and many traders actually overlook the horizontal support and resistances but basics are one of the most important things in trading before you get into the more advanced stuff so some levels require more experience as they might seem washed out and not important anymore but they could become more important in some cases some levels require more experience as they might seem washed actually i have written this twice okay never mind Never trade a horizontal salon, always seek for confluence, e.g. fibre retracement, which is also a horizontal, or you can be adding like a volume level. You always start with the higher time frames and you work your way down monthly, weekly, daily, you can use the four hours as well. The higher the time frame, the bigger the SNR is. So essentially, that's some example. So as you can see, tweezer top, not, not something to likely label, so like this level over here. So essentially below this weekly, we have the monthly and back down here, we have used the le these levels. So essentially here you have the weekly, here you have the weekly, have a weekly um, here and here as well. So essentially these levels that have been taken from the left, are fully respected on the right and this has i believe this is the litecoin chart and this has taken a while to play out like it's it's something that has taken one year plus to get to these levels and you always have to look on the left before you go to the right essentially the most relevant levels are in the recent ones on the right chart but sometimes level can be adjusted by looking at the previous important levels on the left so the levels are pretty much chart specific each asset handle each asset handles the levels differently but essentially these levels they work on any asset doesn't matter like forex crypto indexes is the same thing so let's move on on a daily is next to a weekly level there is no point of adding the daily as well so essentially the example that i'm giving here is you know here we have these resistances that we have been mark marking out and here we have this daily which actually it has been tapped like once and twice but the point is that there is no point of adding this daily level because it's very very close to the weekly actually so it doesn't make sense to add it so when we flip the support and resistances when uh support actually let me let me hide myself so you can see clearly support when broken becomes resistance okay that's a very important thing that you need to be aware of and as you can see we have a weak level from here okay support bounce can get washed up and trying to be back test the back test back test drop another back test another drop and you can see this monthly which actually has been forward from here monthly back test drop another back test drop and you can be entering either on the retest or when you see price going down and after the rejection you should not be like aiming for the perfect entry just get with the flow if there is no single swallow level being broken it's better to go out of the trade bounces on the support are getting smaller and smaller until it's broken like a bow you know the more time you test level the less likely it is for it to hold you know as you can see um weekly you know nice bounce then essentially one more test a little bit of a bounce then gets broken and essentially this will happen most of the time with the more time you test the level the less it's like to hold because you know the less buyers are getting in you know the, the first time they get in second time they get in then they get a little exhausted there is not enough buyers seller pressure comes in you know the more time you test something the, the less likely it is to hold doesn't matter is it a horizontal if you have fib point of control doesn't matter it's the same theory 
And actually, it's all about supply and demand. If you have an area that people are interested in buying, but the bounce are getting smaller and smaller, it means there is less sellers and less people are holding up to that level and you need to come back down in search for a value at a lower price and then see if that lower level there are people interested in buying or it's still overvalued. You can reach a value where there is an agreement between the buyers and the sellers and that when you stay in a range bound, accumulation range, you know, accumulation range, finding a fair value for an asset is all about trading. So essentially, when trading, you're trying to find the fair value at that moment. You know, I see people saying, we're being, uh, what was the saying? We're being overvalued, underappreciated, stuff like this. No, the market is giving the perfect price at this moment of time. So essentially, it's trying to find the value all the time. That's why price is moving. That's why we take money, because price is moving. The worst thing that can happen to an asset is if the price is staying at one point and it doesn't move, if there is no volatility. If there is no volatility and price stays at the same time all the time, we cannot make money. This is the worst thing that can happen. And essentially, the best thing that happens is that price is moving. Because price is moving, it's trying to find this fair value. Another example, we have a resistance level, resistance, pullback, one more test, pullback. Then after, you know, that's the first touch, second touch, on the third touch, we get, it gets broken and it's trying to break out, come a little bit below, kind of fill this fair value gap. Okay, have another push to the upside, test, back test, back test, push. It's a very simple process. Consolidation under the resistance is bullish, especially in an uptrend. You know, here we formed this, this resistance. Test it one more time, test one more time, test one more time. But essentially, we're building high lows and we are consolidating below it. So be aware of this. Um, that's for the presentation. Let's go and look at some levels together, shall we? Okay, so mark of this weekly, mark of this one, um, mark of this one, mark this one as well. So essentially, the example that I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you is a little bit from a year ago, but essentially here we have a weekly test bounce test, bounce, here we actually create a new weekly, but essentially this weekly has held, okay? It has held very nicely. Essentially here we get a push, where to? To this weekly. And as you can see, if we're using just these candles over here, very simple, the first candle is breaking above the weekly, and then on the next candle, you're back testing that weekly. And essentially when price gets above the weekly open, you would be looking for this candle to proceed to the upside. Um, but yeah, essentially the weekly time frame is very, very clean. If we, if we move on to the daily, let's take a look how it looks like. Uh, so yeah, essentially on this candle, probably this Thursday, the 5th of August, this is when it gets above the weekly open, I believe. So basically, this is a time where you want to be like, hey, we're back testing this weekly, price gonna go higher. Let's move on to the next. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a weekly here, it's irrelevant, like nothing happens, then you know, as price is moving to the upside, and we come back to this area, you see on the first drop, this weekly helps perfectly. You get a pull, you get a pull back to the upside, and during this pullback, you're actually testing this previous weekly. So as I said, sometimes the first touch may may seem irrelevant, um, but then it's gonna get respected very nicely. So essentially, you can see this example here that's been very nicely. Over here as well, you see the first time, you know, we bounce and then we break, and then on the next candle, we actually back test this level. You see it very nice and clear. Um, let's create these ones over here. Let's move them. 
Okay, so here this is not respected. Tu, 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 tu. If we use the ones over here, you can see weekly level. Come below, back test, another push to the downside. So I believe it's a very very simple process. Same thing about the daily levels. Let me just select a few ones. Yeah, let me give you an example with these ones. So essentially, you can see this one here has been tapped. So usually after the first tap, you know, after several taps, because this has been tapped one, two, three, four, five, six times. So essentially, usually myself, after the second tap, I remove it. So let's use this one instead, because it's a fresh one. Actually, the lowest one we have over here. So essentially about this daily, you can see here it doesn't help, but over here it would back test as resistance and then reclaims it. So let's use this one over here, this one. Yeah, let's use these daily levels. So over here, what you can notice is that the first tap over here, a little bit of a front run on this daily. The next one, the daily over here, rejection rejection consolidation below resistance and then it tries to flip it into a support over here if we mark it out as kind of a zone let's put it like this okay you can see that it's been like perfect test and flip so that's a good example in my opinion same scenario here come above back test back test nice push to the upside so be aware of this um if you have any questions about them, just let me know. But essentially what you want to be doing about the horizontal levels when you're getting them, let me move on to the monthly. You essentially just gonna mark out when the candle switches. So essentially, let's say this one here is red, this one here is green. So essentially here you have a fresh monthly level. Ignore the whiteness of my chart. So essentially, yeah, um, you have a fresh monthly here level monthly level here so if you have any questions just let me know when we can have a um, discussion about them but this is how you map out the horizontals i believe the examples are very good and yeah thanks for watching